guys. I'm recovering gas out of this RP1436. About a pound in right now. Got me a little filter dryer in line with my recovery. Nothing's burnt up or anything. It's got a bad outdoor TXV. Uh, I set both of these at the same time. The system had, this house had one five ton and that wasn't enough air, so we put two three tons, one there and one there. You can see that this is the original. This one had to be added. There's a line set cover. We had the electrician to, you know, run a line and put a disconnect. But the job came out great, but the outdoor TXV has failed for the heat pump cycle. So I'm in recovery process. And uh, when that's done, we'll, well, I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling the top off and getting it uh, prepped, take the corner off, and then we're gonna swap out this TXV. All right, guys, so this is my first time doing a major repair on, an, on one of these new Ring platforms. And that's what Ring designed this unit for, was for ease of service and ease of repair. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna kinda go into the positives and the negatives. The positives are the fan grill comes off very easy. Uh, the whole top, not just the grill, the whole top comes off very, very simple. The wires are easy to unplug. They feed through a hole real easy. This is fantastic. The whole corner electrical post or electrical section, two screws and the whole thing comes out and we have full access to the TXV, to the reversing valve, to the compressor, everything. So that's a huge plus. Now I did find a couple negatives here. First one is we have an all sweat TXV, which I mean is not a big deal with Ream, we're used to that. But instead of just being able to unsweat it here because this is brass to copper, we have to unsweat all three of these feeder tubes. Two, three. Because that's how the new TXV comes. The new TXV doesn't just come here and here, it comes here and then this whole section comes. And they don't want you to unsweat right here because that's brass to copper. So that's a negative. Another, we're coming to the end of our recovery here. Another negative that I see is it doesn't look like their bulb tape lasts is very long because that fell off and you can see where it's, the rest of it is, the whole bottom of it, see, See how all the tape fell off? All this whole glob fell off. But see how easy it's coming off? See? So, a couple negatives. I mean, not everything's going to be perfect, but a huge positive is that whole corner being able to come off. That, that's going to make it very easy to change this TXV since it is all sweat. Okay, guys, at this point, we have the old TXV out and you can see that's how it comes and I'll grab the new one here in just a second I cut it here oh yeah which goes right there there's the equalization tube and then there's the three holes for the feeder tubes this is the old one here's the new one this is how it comes from the factory So I'm going to get it in place, braze the bottom. That'll hold it steady, braze in my equalizer, and then braze in these equalization tubes, and then I should be able to do a leak test and a vacuum. Okay, guys, it's all done except for the bulb. Here, here, and then one, two, three. This was actually easier than I thought until I got to this middle one right here. This one, very simple. The bottom one, very, very simple. That middle one right there, that one gave me a run for my money. I'll give you guys a little tip if you ever do this. It does not take much solder in here. Once you heat it up and push it in, it pretty much reseals itself from the existing solder that was there. Now, 
with that being said, you're going to want to dab you just a little bit of solder on there to finish sealing the hole. But you have to be very careful because they these things tend to pop out really easy. The first one I did was this top one because it was easy access so I could because I've never done one before. It popped out on me a couple times, but I got the hang of it. You push it in, it reseals itself. And then you just, you, you, you take your torch and take it further away and just barely let that solder melt on there to finish closing it up and you'll be good. But what the middle one did to me is the, the coupling actually decided to split open and I didn't have hardly any heat on it. Had the same amount of heat on that one as I did on the other two. But for some reason, it, it split it on me. So you can see I really had to, uh, that one right there, I really had to lay the braze to it. But uh, I got it. And uh, I'm going to put a nitrogen pressure test on it now and then transfer it into vacuum. All right, guys, I got 222 pounds on it. I got bubbles on everything. I don't see any bubbles. So, oh happy day. Let me do this here. Start that time clock. I'll let that hold for a little bit and then we'll transfer into vacuum. All right guys, the vacuum's all done. I got my low pressure gauge on the heat charging port. I can take it that way through cooling and heating. I have my pipe clamp set up with my subco. Taking the refrigerant out of the recovery drum and then whatever I can't get out of there, I'll top it off with a fresh jug of 410A. I'm just simply using a charging hose with a ball valve over there. Once I'm done, I'll put the high side on and then if I need to add additional charge, I'll just go through the suction right here and take my pressure off of the heat charging port. So uh, I got to put the top back on. So I'm going to do that while the uh, charge is going in. All right, guys, I have the system running and cooling. Uh, we're about five pounds in, a little low on the suction. Trying to develop some suction and some superheat here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to charge it up in the cooling mode, and then I'm going to switch it over to heat. Uh, reversing valves energized in the heating mode on these units, so I'll probably just put a jumper right there on the defrost board. That way we don't have to wait for the time delay. Uh, because what it was doing is it was pumping down in the heating mode. So I'm gonna to finish topping off this charge, get the subcooling value where I want it. We only have a degree of subcooling right now. We're looking for about eight to 10. So once I get it in that range, we'll switch it over to heat. All right, guys, I've put a jumper between red and B. B is the reversing valve on the ream, ream, ream and rude. We're definitely not pumping down anymore. The suction pressure is holding steady. Head pressure, it's climbing up. It's about 65 degrees out here. So that's not nothing out of the ordinary. But our suction pressure is holding. It's running in the heat mode. Um, when I would run it in heat mode before this repair, it would just immediately pump down. It took about 10 seconds, 10, 15 seconds, and it was pumped all the way down. So it looks like our, our repair is successful. Um, head pressure is at 366. 360. It's climbing, like I said, which is not out of the ordinary because it is a little warm out here. But uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I couldn't really get my sub cooling up above more than three degrees, but that's because uh, it, it's kind of cool in the house. So I'm going to warm up the evaporator, warm the house up a little bit, and uh, and then drop it back into cooling mode and see if that makes a difference. <clears throat> All right, guys, she's all done. Uh, just wanted to show y'all that it was up and running. Got the charge good. Uh, heat mode's running great. We're gonna talk about some of the pluses and negatives on this unit when we get in the truck, but the ring lives to keep on fighting. All right, guys, I'm pulling away from this man's house. Uh, i am got to go run back to the ring supplier which is also my comfort maker supplier and return the old txv but i'm going to try to keep this short uh i i just want to talk about some of the negatives and positives about the ream uh new the, about the new condensing unit 
uh, w even though we went over them a little bit in the video, but I figured it'd be better to do it this way. So let's start with the positives. The positives are Ream has nailed their design. I mean, they couldn't have done any better. It, it's so simple to take apart. I mean, the top, not just the fan grill. I mean, I took the whole top off. Simple, simple. Uh, and it went and it went back on with a breeze. Not like Goodman, where when you take the top off, everything flops out, and you got to have three bin to put the top back on. I was able to do it by myself, no problem at all. Uh, matter of fact, Ream's top goes back on easier than Train, and Train was actually, I mean, when you take the whole top off, not just the fan grill, uh, Train was was it was the easiest one in my opinion until I did the Serene. Came off easy, went back on, no problem. Um, that the corner of the unit where your service valves are and where your electrical is, oh man, that was fantastic. I mean, two screws, that's it, two screws. You lift up and Ream has made their compressor wires and their de uh, defrost th thermostat wires and everything long. Well, you have to unhook the defrost thermostat, but that's not a big deal, it's just a little clip. They've made their wires long enough to where you can pull the slack and lay it over to the side. I mean, fantastic. Uh, very, very great. Made it so easy to change that TXV versus if I would have had to bend over, you know, or whatever. But brazing in that TXV was a breeze because of that side corner coming off. So I was very impressed with that. Um, putting everything back together, as far as putting the corner post, the, or the the corner section back on perfect didn't have to fight it and cuss and i mean it just it locks right back in place the screws line up you pop your two screws in you're done it, it was beautiful no fighting that at all um let's see what else uh that's uh you know uh, feeding the wires through the hole the condenser fan motor wires to get back to the defrost board and the capacitor and all that easy easy not like goodman uh where you know you got to reach down a mile and you can't see but uh very very easy uh no problems there either like i said i was you know i was able to do all this by myself um okay so the negatives uh really not a lot of negatives the only negative that i have is the txv itself Instead of just brazing, unbrazing the bottom and the top, you have to unsweat the feeder tubes that go, I guess that's what you call them, that's what I'm gonna call them. You have to unsweat the feeder tubes that go into the condenser coil. And so now, I was a little worried about that because uh, I have never replaced a TXV like that before. But it, it actually went very easy. Um, they, I, I, I put my torch on low heat and unsweated them. They popped right out, no problem. Uh, two out of the three popped right back in and, and pretty much rebrazed their self. Um, the third feeder tube that I did, it gave me a little trouble when I when I went to. I, and like I said, I was using very little heat on that because that's some thin, thin shit. But I was using very little heat. I used the same amount of heat on all three of them. The first two, they went right back in and they pretty much rebrazed their self. But I went ahead and added a little bit of uh, uh, seal floss on top of it to strengthen it up. The third one, it, it pushed in, but when it did, the coupling on the condenser coil that it goes into uh, kind of started like cracking around the edges and wanting to melt away. And then it kind of shrunk. So the feeder tube didn't fit anymore. So I had to pull it out and I actually had to take my needle nose and stick the needle nose inside that coupling and, you know, kind of waller out that, uh, that the hole that the feeder tube goes into. But I was able to get it. I was lucky. Uh, I don't know why just that particular one did that to me. 
Because like I said, I wasn't using high heat and I used the same amount of heat on the other two. But I was very fortunate that I took my needle nose I, and I just kind of gave it a twist, you know, while it was still warm. Wallered it out a little bit and she went right back in. And then it, uh, that one did not rebraze itself because I guess all the solder had, you know, fell off of it when it cracked. So I held it. It was very hard. I mean, it kind of, it, it, it rebrazed it, sit, it resealed itself enough to hold it in place to where I could use the torch and a piece of solder and, or seal floss, if you will, and dab it on there. You cannot use a lot of heat on those feeder tubes because they'll pop out. They, uh, they, uh, they, the, uh, a couple of them popped out on me a couple times because I think I was getting the torch too close. So I was using low heat and then kind of keeping the torch away, uh, a good distance away from them. Uh, but if I learned that if I keep my torch away with low heat and just barely dab that seal floss on there and just hurry up and get that heat on there, let that seal floss melt real good, um, it wasn't a problem and I was able to seal all three of them up. Uh, we held 222 pounds of nitrogen for 15 minutes. Uh, a vacuum we pulled the vacuum down uh I, I think i stopped it at like uh 300 because uh jim I, I can't never say his last name the refrigeration guy i didn't know this but he said when if you don't do a pump down and you're pumping the compressor and everything you don't want to pump it down to less than 250 microns because i think he said it does something to the oil in the compressor so i pumped it down to 300 microns and stopped and uh and it hailed so I and I loaded it up with refrigerant and she's running great. So uh really good design for repair work. Uh you know, I, I thought it would be a little longer than this before I'd have to make a major repair on one of my rings, but it, that one's only maybe a year old, if it's even that old. Yeah, it's probably well, no, I don't know. It it if it's a year, it's barely. So I was a little disappointed at that, but I guess it is what it is. That's my third TXV with rain first outdoor heat pump TXV with rain but I've had two evaporator TXVs fail so I'm not impressed with their TXVs which is another reason that I like ICP because it's a piston outside on the heat pump and a piston inside unless you get a TXV air handler but it is what it is I said I was going to keep this short but I see here I'm rambling on and the time's ticking so Hope you guys enjoyed the video and the chat here at the end. And as always, thank y'all for watching. And uh, don't forget about every Monday, tune in to the Cowboys of HVAC podcast. Uh, you, it can be listened to on iTunes, Google Play, and workingjoesroundtable.com. Every Monday, the, me and Zach C.O. to the Cowboys of HVAC podcast. And uh, if you've got a suggestion for a topic, email it to cowboysofhvac at gmail.com. All right, guys. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all on the next one.